Well, that is inconvenient. Now I remember why I go for the borderless. Never mind that. Let's hope that, yeah, now it works a lot better. Uh, sorry for that a bit interruption. Uh, right now I had a bit of a problem, but it sorted itself out. Mainly because I've switched from borderless to not borderless, basically. So an FN scar in my mind has has you know the tan look. So that's what we're gonna switch to. Uh, this is the secondary weapon for the tech. They usually have a submachine gun, but they can also get this assault rifle with the long barrel, the forward grip and everything. However, its main drawback is that it is completely restricted to single shot. And that is actually a bit annoying because the single shot is usually something reserved for longer ranges. But you don't get a scope for the gun. In fact, you get what pretty much amounts to a quick reaction scope. Now, that's not all bad, because a long range scope gives you tunnel vision, and you don't want tunnel vision in a game like this, pure and simple. But it's still annoying because someone else now we got the right one uh, we're still gonna pick steady hands because that perk is the most useful all right so oh six uh, oh six hundred hours and we got a storm brewing so hopefully that'll assist in staying away from any snipers I don't like coca farm as a map I just want to make that perfectly clear. I do not like Coca Farm as a map. In fact, I think Coca Farm is a loathsome map that has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. In fact, if I were to replace Coca Farm with a map, it would be a map completely, and I mean completely, covered in buildings. I mean, most classes have flashbangs or similar stuff, but there's no real, there's no reason to actually use most of them. Uh, let's see, incoming. Hostiles are going loud. Say what you will about the MK17, however, even at single fire, it is a rather accurate. So, it's, it, it's not without its pros, but I think one of the reasons they decided it shouldn't have... Shit, man down. Okay, so we got a man down. Where the, where the fuck did he go down? I can't see where... Oh, wait, he's, cl he's close to one of our mates. They'll handle it. Uh, we're gonna place down our first jammer here. Yeah, he got him. Good. Oh, we actually got one hit, and some suppression on one of the enemies. Not bad, not what, I'm hope what I was hoping for. What makes us more versatile is also our main drawback. We can't scout using the scope, so we have to rely on the binoculars. And I haven't really decided if I like the fact... I, it just feels wrong to have that kind of right, sight on a 7.62 assault rifle. It just doesn't feel right, you know? It feels like it should have a more... I mean, I could get behind the EOTech or the aim point or any one of those. But just having... That reflex sight. Alright, let's hope we didn't get spotted. I'll try to focus more him. on the game now. And the game right now is that we are trying to advance along the flank, see if we can spot anything. We're advancing under our own umbrella. 
our own jamming umbrella, but the easiest thing in the world is placing yourself in such a manner, or placing your drone ahead. outside the effective range of the jammer. As long as you do that, you can... Yeah, I got the guy. I can see where he's shooting from, but I can't see him. So we're gonna retreat mo into the bush and hope that he makes a bad move. I don't want to shoot on a maybe. Not when I am so exposed. If I'm getting shot now, my team will not be able to get me out in time. But like I was saying, I would li really like a map right now that didn't have any bushes whatsoever on it. I mean, just a cityscape map. Largest city you can imagine. Okay, so I'll have to assume enemy multi-class was firing. And it's now heading that area. They got him. Enemy drone so that's not a free kill for me. Good, they are shooting the drone, so I don't have to. And the problem with me moving into this kind of dense foliage, foliage, is that I have no idea where the fuck I'm going. For all that I know, I could be moving straight into someone's gun sight. I don't want that. If you're wondering why I abandoned my crawl there, it is because it wasn't useful anymore. If someone was watching, they would see me running as well as crawling. It, there wouldn't literally not be a difference, but I don't think there are any more Tango down. Enemy drone. Watch there was one, but... I think there was a scout in that there was, and we got away from him, and that's good. We've broken contact, and now he's stupid enough to follow, follow in after us. Tango down, scout. That was stupid of him. He knew he was being marked. Now you see, the semi-automatics semi is a very powerful weapon. Especially at close range. I was able to win two of the firefights. And change the entire change the entire outcome of the match, basically. Uh, but I didn't I whenever I had to recon, I had to use the binoculars. It wasn't like with the sniper or the ranger classes I'm more familiar with. Still, I find it preferable over the machine gun, uh, sorry, the submachine gun, since the submachine gun doesn't have any ranged capabilities at all. I mean, you could be f at long ranges, as the submachine gun is akin to just throwing pebbles, and here I got a glancing shot off at the beginning of the game at about two or three hundred meters. And that's preferable, especially on a map uh, that focuses so much on ranges, such as this one. Like I said, I would like a close quarters battles map. I would really want that. Because a close quarters battles map would f take a lot of the things that people know, and I'm saying no in quotation marks about the game and turn it upside down. It would make some of the classes, um, especially in the support area, stronger. And it would be uh, some very interesting, uh, interesting uh, tactics for the tank. Because the tank is all about moving in close quarters, making himself a trap, and then telling the enemy pretty much where he is. I mean, the tank... Many of these designs we are seeing, or are at least some of them, doesn't feel like they are...
made to be played in a forced environment, or at least not at longer ranges. And sadly, many of the maps, some of which you can pretty much shoot halfway through, or in the case of Coca Farm, if you control the ridge, you can shoot pretty much at any place on the map. Okay, so the guy that got in our replacement got disconnected, and that was huge. Most likely he crashed or disconnected earlier, but his loading time made sure that we all got affected as well. Now, Co on Coca Farm on this part of the map is pretty much running until you reach. running until you reach the wall. The wall of the city. And, of course, using the foliage to make sure the enemy doesn't have any contact with you. Once we're done, place jammer, and enemy drone is, of course, right outside it. We can waste pretty much all the ammo in the world because we can restock it and we have the advantage. At least the advantage in numbers. We don't have the advantage when it comes to the tactical, tactical situation as a whole. That's quite a mouthful if you haven't had anything to drink for a while. Now remember what I did last round. I went in quick down here and snuck up on this area. If someone is trying to do that, repeat my tactic, they'll find me waiting for them. Enemy drone overhead. And that's... Yeah, that's my guys firing at the drone. Not the best strategy, but... They want to do it, then better them than me, actually. I don't mind the drone going down. And... Oh, hello. Where the fuck did you come from? Ah, never mind. Right now, I am wondering to myself if I can try and push the enemy part of the map. I think I'm actually gonna try it. I don't think it's a smart thing to do, mind you. I think it's a horrible thing to do. But I'm gonna wait, and then I'm gonna force the issue. I'm gonna place that on a jammer here, and then I'm going to advance. Oh god, he's gonna draw fire. There. Now they can't see that we're activating the jamming tower. Good. We got the guy. Enemy scout just ahead. Oh god, the sniper's below me. Sniper down, sniper down. I actually thought the scout was the guy I had behind, in front of me, but apparently I was wrong about that one. The enemy scout might actually see me, uh, but I'm still within. Yeah. Lost I'm actually gonna stay down for this one. He has lost visual, and he must assume I've been hauling ass. I don't know if I can see him, but right now I'm actually pretty happy that my short is close range. Sorry, that my scope is close range. Uh, now the camera is being a fucker. Pretty much. Do we know that he's actually in there? I could just shoot or. Right yeah. Data. Tango down. I wasn't confident he was actually in there. He uh, most likely did not know the sniper was so close, or he would just shot the sniper. Or he knew we both were that close and he hoped that neither of us would see him. Four kills that game, best of our, best of our team. 
can't complain about that, really. So, we're gonna play at least another game. Desert Outpost is a better map, if I have to rate them. Uh, it's certainly a map that I know better than the other fucking map. I'm gonna see what people pick before I myself do a pick. But on this map, I'm actually going for the sniper. Now, don't let the fact that they have several below level 10 deceive you. New players can be just as adept at uh, this game as newer players. And I've come to not automatically expect that the team with the most high levels win. I mean, the team with the most high levels might actually just ha have more playtime. Because the levels do not reflect your skill level, they reflect playtime. And my level 25 does reflect the fact the that I've put some in time into this game, but maybe not play it all day long. I have to admit that while I find Ghost War fun, it's not a it's not something I can lose myself in, if you catch if you know what I mean. It's not a game where I can just feel like Uh, feel like I'm losing, are going loud. losing uh, track of time or anything like that. It's a game where I like to play a few rounds, either play well or play badly, play with friends. But like I said, when it, I'm actually when it comes to losing time, the single player campaign in Ghost Recon Wildlands can do that for me. Uh, it's a standard Ubisoft power fantasy concept. But it works for me. Uh, hey, it's it's actually a quite com it's down, quite competent down. at what it does. And fuck. So let's talk less about the single player and more about how we're gonna cover the pickup of our comrade. Good. We're gonna hit the deck while the scout drone is up. And then I'm gonna see if I can't hey, get. Shit, I'm Taking up a signal from the recon You'll be active soon. I didn't hit the first ones, but I was standing up. Good enemy activity. That looks painful. Oh crap! Shit, man down. You're the only one left. Frag out. Hostiles are going loud. I need to really haul ass here. If you're wondering why I removed the silencer, it's because the silencer is... Tango down, sweet. Yeah, they're covered by the sniper. I'm not stupid enough to actually... Well, I did my best. <sighs> I should have played the ranger. I could have handled the flanking guy by the ranger, but not with a pistol. But the ranger was taken, so nothing to do there. I'm not as adept with the... MSR as I feel I ought to be, so if I'm playing sniper next round... I am of the opinion that I should be switched back to, you know, the SR1. As you can see, its accuracy is worse, but handling is better. But then again, I feel I should actually learn how to fucking play that with the MSR. So, well, let's just keep it that way and hope for the best.
But I am annoyed by the fact that I couldn't get that sniper. If I had gotten that sniper, I would have been most likely able to revive one before the flanking guy caught up with me. Now, I'm not salty about losing that firefight, because by all rights I should have. By, in fact, by all rights I should have lost the first firefight as well. Because um, there's really no way for a sniper with just a pistol and a, a bolt action rifle to compete with a submachine gun at Enemy close range. Point. And that is how it should be. Hostiles are going loud. So Got I'm actually much. quite proud about the entire the entire um, Who's lost visual? Clear. pistol thing. Marking that doesn't mean now. I like to lose, though, so let's try and make sure we do not lose. Oh, come on! He was right there! Right there! And I was like... Ah, uh, never mind. Never mind what I was like. I missed. I mean, I mean, this gun is supposed to be the more accurate one, but I don't feel that if you catch... If you know what I mean. Sniper? I can't actually tell if that's a sniper or not, and that's annoying. Uh, however, what we should be doing is have a look on the tower, see if someone is sneaking up on it. The problem is that we are right now as... Picking up a signal from the recon tower. Yeah. The Fuck the maid. Broke visual with the enemy. Scout drone destroyed. That means we're gonna creep up slowly and gently until we have a firing solution on this fl on this flank. I don't know why, but my tongue sometimes doesn't. You've got a fix on me. Taking fire. Sniper down. We got the sniper. That's nice. I don't really... I don't know why I missed the first shot, but never mind that. Let's see if the ranger is going to turn up. The ranger was at my flank. I'm pinned down here. He's gone. Yeah, I should break Trust contact me. as well. Clear. And by trying to break contact far too eagerly, I stood up and became a target. Had the enemy ranger decided to make a point out of me. I don't know why the enemy sniper was the guy who decided to just... They got me marked. Ah, there we go. There's the scout. Sweet. Broke visual with the enemy. Heads up. We've got enemy activity. We have a scout and a multi-class left. And there's the scout. One scout is down. Since the last guy is a multi-class, I think frag he's... Out, frag out. Yeah, I think he's actually is in there. Yeah, sweet. We managed to even it out, at least, so there's that. This time we are going down the right flank. I don't want to be caught in the open near the tower as a sniper again. And they are most likely going to be more comfortable playing on that side since they won last time on that side. I should really 
give the SRS another try because I feel more comfortable with that gun. But I feel the MSR is the more good looking gun. So let's just learn how to shoot with that one, okay? Besides, we don't need to go very far to be in a good marksmanship position on this map. In fact, we don't have to go very far at all. Then again... Ah crap, I just missed the thing. My entire policy around snipers and drones is that you shouldn't shoot the drone unless you are... Ah crap! I saw the enemy sniper and I thought I was safe. But the multi-class got me. Either multi-class or ranger. Most likely the ranger, because he is in the better position. Now, my... Ah, oh, never mind. He, he can heal himself. I would, however, have preferred at least someone to try and go back and pick me up. Since I should be... Oh, come on, ranger. I don't know how the ranger did not understand that he was in the firing line of at least two uh, enemy operators, but he didn't understand that, and for some reason... Or rather not... Oh, God, scout! Could you please not expose yourself? The scout needs to move back down. I don't know if he understands it. I'm not gonna tell him on voice chat because I feel it's a bit rude to try and tell people on voice chat what to do. The point man, on the other hand, seems to understand that his job now is to wait for the advancing enemy and not make a fuss out of himself. Yep. I'm not at all surprised that that happened, really, because it was basically the only thing that the enemy could do. Now, I am, however, worried about this team's lack of willingness to revive people. Uh, when there were three people, I can understand that they didn't revive, even though I feel that the scout should have done so. Uh, never mind the fact that the scout that the ranger got himself killed needlessly. But at least the point man can get some points on the board. The only problem is that this point man doesn't really have many choices right now. And going inside the house is most likely one of the worst ones. Because he will be entering a place where he can't get out. And also a place where you can throw in a grenade and kill a bunch of people if you like. I like to be wrong about it, but I don't think I am. And um, yeah, someone is incoming. If someone were to sit at, up there, they would see him. But I don't think he thinks about that, and that's that is why he's going to see. By the door. Sniper just run past the door. Nice. The only problem is now the enemy knows exactly where he is. Oh, sweet. Nice. Last guy's in the tower. You can break contact and try and revive me otherwise. I'm not sure that's the best call really, but I think the guy in the tower is expecting him to try and duel. Go behind the rocks.
If he's doing that, then he should really go behind the rocks. Because as a sniper, I can handle the guy in the tower. But I think he wants to... I wouldn't blame him if he wants to finish this on his own. But I am 150. Yeah, he can get the... Nah, the... Yeah. It was a nice try, but hey. Can't win them all. I got way too overconfident at the starting of the fight. And I shouldn't have. That was the main flaw of my game. Now I'm gonna quit this and I'm gonna sw switch back to... Uh, on full screen because I'm a bit sick of some of the things that happens when I have full screen so I'm gonna switch back to borderless and no I'm not gonna do that if you're wondering why I have have all these options very mixed it's a custom blend I have for the game Usually the best blend is not make everything as high as possible uh, But in the multiplayer your frames per second also matters So I think actually that's gonna be that for now. I might actually go for another Another project Dead. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.